So I will be talking about this. Uh, inshallah, I can get on the staff of the Quran in Jewish time.
within the tradition of Islam, there have been two ways of doing dream interpretations. There have been how many different ways? Two different ways, two different methods. You can say, like, you know, you have Imam Shafi and Imam Hanifa, they have different. So there are two different methods that have been used to do dream interpretation. I will discuss both of them today. But then what we will do is we will use one method, the one that I particularly like, which is the one by Imam Ibn Salim. Okay. Imam Ibn Salim actually combines both of these to some degree, but he sticks with one of them more. And the second way, I will also discuss what that is. So in the first dream <coughs> that is in the story of Yusuf والسلام, he says, Yusuf والسلام, he says, Ya Abadi, O oh my dear dad, my dear father, inni ra'aytu ahada ashra kawkabah wa shamsa wal qamar, ra'aytu hum bisajideen. I saw in my dreams twelve what? Stars and the sun and the moon bowing down to me. Now, in the end of the story of Yusuf والسلام, you find it's what? Interpretation. But before we find that interpretation, how do we understand it as a dream that will give you that result? A method. A method that will give you that result. So this is the question. The, re the way is, you look at the symbolism within the Qur'an. In the symbolism of Qur'an, the good people and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, good people are described as stars. For example, the Prophet himself is described as what? The Prophet himself is described as Sirajam. Sirajam. Ya inna arsalnaka shahidam wa mubashiram wa da'iyan bin Allahi wa sirajam muniram. So the Prophet himself has been called what in the Quran? A son. Okay. The Prophet also said, As Sahabi kan nuju, my companions are like stars. So, human beings have been described in the Qur'an as stars, also other places, even when, for example, uh, the Prophet ﷺ, when he was doing his hijrah, and when he was coming into Medina, what was he being called? Ta'ala Badr'a. So the Prophet is a full shining moon. So, in this dream of Yusuf ﷺ, these stars, the sun, the moon, represents what? Represents the pious, represents the, the pious people. They're bowing down to Yusuf So only, not only will they all bow down to Yusuf, but they will have some sort of uh, enlightenment, you can say. Some spirituality, so they will come to a religious uh, elevation. In the same way, uh, for example, the Prophet ﷺ said that just as you look at the stars, the angels, they look at you. Just as you look at the stars as shining bright, the angels, they look at you. Right? And then also in the Qur'an we find, for example, who is the nur? Allah waliyu alladhina amanu yufrijuhu minal thulumati ila nur. So nur itself is a source of guidance and then the, the one that is emitting nur Reflecting nur is also what a source of guidance. So this is regarding the which dream, the first dream. The method that was used to understand this dream was what you look at the symbols within the dream and you compare those symbols with the symbolism within the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So this is the first method. We'll go through the, all the dreams using the first method that's been used in our tradition. By the way, so this is Imam Ibn Salim's method for the most part. But there are a lot of other factors which I'm not going to go into today regarding the issue of dream inter interpretation. The second fact, the second method, I just want to touch upon it, the person who was the <coughs> most, you can say, strongly represents the other method, it seems to be, is Shawaniyullah. Shawlullah Muhammad Din bin Abdul Ali in his book on Ta'wil al Ahadis, sorry, um, in which he has discussed the method of you look at dreams as if they are real life events. This is the basic premises that 
You look at dreams as if they're what? Real life events, and you interpret them from that perspective. So, but then again, when you interpret things from a real life perspective, the one who is looking, the one who is looking, it makes a difference. If the person is, has taqwa, he will see something different. A person who doesn't have taqwa will see something different. So at some point, they actually merge together. For example, uh, if you take Shaulina uh, Muhaddas Dinmi Rahmatullah's method, the Shams and Qamar and all of this, so a believer knows light is representative of guidance in general. right? So he will also, this will be just in the Aam sense, in the uh, the event, in the sense of Ahad. Uh, because that is Ta'weelul, what he takes. Shaulina's argument is the word itself, Ta'weelul Ahadith. Ta'wil means to make what? Ta'wil means to make interpretation, to try and interpret. A, a hadith is events. To make interpretation of the events, events of the dream. Make it just try to understand it, to focus on it. And if you have a good sign, sound, sound, sound mind and a good heart, you will be able to decipher what it's trying to say. So, this was whose method? This is, you can say, the other method. The method is itself in the word of Ta'wilul Ahadith. It's in itself in the word in the word of Ta'wilul Ahadith. Now, by the way, one thing that I do want to mention. How many of you people here sitting here have ever had a strange dream in your life? Oh, you've had a strange dream? Strange dream? Yeah, dreams is one of the ways that people can have a sign, an ayah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In a sense, there is something more to this physical world. There's something going on more than the physical world. Something else is going on here. And because people have true dreams. As you know, the Prophet sallallahu before he went to the cave, there were, there were two stages that he went through before he went to the cave. The first stage the Prophet sallallahu went through before he went to the cave was that every morning he would find whatever he had in his dream came true uh, in the morning, right? This was the first stage. The second stage was like feeling, wanting to feel isolated. He started to love isolation. And then finally he went to the mountain. Anyway, so uh, these are the two methods. Ta'wilul ahadith or the other is looking at the ruqya, so to say the dream or ahlam, looking at it from the perspective of how the Quran sees it. But they both meet from the perspective that if the person is pious, the pious person will see the events themselves in the light of the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet So this is how they both meet. Now, so this was the first dream. He saw, Yusuf wasalam, he saw that the brothers and the sun and the moon, meaning the father and the mother. By the way, the mother is usually missing from our interpretation. But it is actually from what some of the research, that this is just a side point of this ayah, that it was, it has been assumed in many of our tafasir that the uh, the mother has passed away. But from this ayah, it seems that no, this may not be the case because there's the sun and the moon and then the twelve stars, which is the twelve brothers. So anyway, the, there's some difference in interpretation here. But anyhow, the second dream is which one? The second one is when he goes to the jail and they ask him they ask him that you look like a truthful person. And, and because you're a truthful and a trustworthy person and perhaps in the time of Yusuf wasalam, just like in the time of Musa it was the time of magic in this time of Isa it was the time of medicine in terms of the human evolution that was taking place so I know this as a fact that the Egyptians, the Egyptians, the pharaohs, and the, the dynasties of the pharaohs, they were big into dreams, by the way. This is well known and documented about them, that they, they were big into dreams and dream, dream interpretation and so on and so forth. So this is like a historical reality that took place in Egypt itself. Anyhow, so the second dream is the person he sees, what? He sees a bird eating from his... 
head. Now, how do you come to the conclusion, which is that he will be what? Hanged. The face, it represents what? Within the Quran. Or in the general sense also. The face represents yourself. Right? It represents your whole being, your existence. La yabda illa wajhu. Why? The waj represents your existence, your glory, your manifestation. You know, kullu man alayha fan, everything on, it, on, the, on, on this earth. Kullu man alayha. Alayha yani alayha. Ha here is referring to the earth. Kullu man alayha fan, everything on this earth will perish, all living things. Wa yabda wajhu rabbika dun And nothing will remain except for the glory and the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. So the face represents the personality. It represents what? The personality. Now, there's a bird eating, which bird? Is this a halal bird or a haram bird? Haram bird. So you look at it from the Quranic perspective. It was not some good bird. I think it was the crow, right? Because in the Hanafi Fiqah, it depends what the crow eats. If the crow eats good things, then it's more towards the halal, still within Makruh. And if it eats the haram stuff, then it's definitely. But it's in, not generally in the other, amongst the other other fuqaha also. The dream, of the dreaming, the dream of like the haram animals is what is bad. You know, dreaming the dream of haram animals is bad. And dreaming the dream of halal animals is a good thing. So when you, so you look at the dream, the dream that you see. You look at it from the perspective of how the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ or how the Sharia itself sees that dream. Okay? So, that's the second dream. So, the first dream, the first dream was more symbolic. Symbolic in a sense, he was seeing the sun and the moon and the stars. The second dream is also symbolic, but it's, sim it's less, you could say, the, the level of its symbolism is a little bit what? A little bit less. It's using animals or things of halal and haram nature. So when you see a dream that has to do with halal and haram nature, then you know if it's a good dream or if it is a bad dream. Okay? So this is the, uh, the result of the dream of, uh, of the second dream that that person had. Now the third type of dream in Surah Yusuf uh, uh, is the dream of the boy who is uh, squeezing the grapes. And the answer to him was exactly how Imam Shawlullah uses the word Ta'wilu al-Hadith, which is he saw him squeezing the grapes and he said that you will be what? Huh? Squeezing the grapes, meaning uh, giving alcohol to the to the king. Okay. Now, Yusuf salam, he sees a dream not only about himself but about his whole family. Yusuf salam, saw a dream about his whole family, and the second, the next two dreams, they're only about the person themselves. The next two dreams are about the personal dream a person has about his life. The fourth dream. Now what's the fourth dream? Huh? He, the king. And when a king sees a dream, he doesn't see it only for himself, but he sees it in his role as a king. Okay. If, if, so depending upon the role the person is playing, his dream will be at that level. So the king he sees, a dream, what does he see in his dream? He sees seven huh? cows, what type? Okay, so just stop at cows. What does cows represent within the Quran? Okay, good. It's halal animal, it's good. But what else? The Quran specifically uses cattle and cows and an'am for representing rizq. Huh? Rizq. Rizq. 
Rizq meaning what? Your sustenance. So you have seven fat cows and seven lean cows. It is talking, of, for, for example, in the ayah, Mata'allakum wa li'anna'amikum. By the way, many times this whole, how the cow is representative of your rizq, your level of rizq, the milk that comes from it is, is a source of sustenance and rizq. Right? So the, and the symbolism you see in the dream, you compare it with how Quran sees it. Oh, okay. So for example, if you see rain, is rain good or bad? Rain is good. If you see a flood, good or bad? Bad. So you look at the dream that you have and compare it with the Quran. And if you don't find it in the Quran, you find it in the Sunnah of the Prophet Okay. And so when you now, now you further take this analysis of dream interpretation and you go to, for example, Kitab al of Imam Bukhari, for example, and so on and so forth. For example, a very good example of this is Kitab al in Sahih Bukhari where the Prophet, uh, where uh, there's a dream seen by Sahabi and Umar عنه, and the others. They see Umar عنه, wearing a long, what? Who's read this hadith? The hadith where Umar is wearing long clothes. Okay? You'll see how I'm connecting this to Sutul Yusuf. And Sutul Yusuf, because Quran is the key to in interpreting what? The, the dream. Quran is the key. Now the whole Sutul Yusuf goes around the theme of the shirt, the, the kameez. Okay. In the first instance, the, they took the, the shirt of Yusuf والسلام, and put blood on it. False. Bidam in kadhim. Okay. In the second instance, she ran behind him and she tore his shirt. Okay. When she tore his shirt, shirt, as the Prophet said, represents the honor and dignity. The Prophet said, shirt represents what? Honor and dignity. Now you take, and this is the beauty of Islam. No other religion fits like this. Everything within Islam just fits perfectly. And this is where one of the beauties of Islam is is that everything in Islam fits perfectly. So for example, the Prophet said, seeing the longer dress is representative of honor. Now look at this. In the story of Yusuf والسلام, when they lied on Yusuf, the shirt had damin kathib. Right? The, the blood, the blood, the false blood. When they tried to again blame Yusuf والسلام, his shirt was torn, his honor was torn. You see? It, it goes hand in hand. And this is the beauty of Qur'an. That while the Qur'an is a book that will unlock the keys to people's dreams, right? Because dreams, they come from on above. The dr dreams, they come from where? So this also, let me make it clear. When a person goes to sleep, <coughs> when a person goes to sleep, and actually, just for fun, I will share with you a fiqhi, a fiqhi mas'ala that has been... Uh, irking the ulama for centuries now. This is a fiqh issue I will share with you. Let me just make this point. When a person goes to sleep, his ruh, it goes up. His ruh, what? Goes up. And depending upon his level, for example, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was in Isra, in Mer, when he was in the Mi'raj, when he was in the Mi'raj, he heard the footsteps of who? Bilal. Where was Bilal really? He was on earth and sleeping. Subhanallah asra bi abdihi layla min al masjid al harami ila al masjid al aqsa. So he was taken, but his ruh was in the gardens of Jannah. His ruh was in the gardens of Jannah. And he, I don't want to go into too much details, but there's a lot of fine points that come out of this point if you just think about it. So Bilal radiallahu anhu is sleeping, but his ruh is in Jannah. So, the ruh, as the Prophet ﷺ has mentioned, when the ruh leaves the body, now one of the two things happen. Either it is two, two, two levels of two different things happen. Two thing, different things are happening. Two different, two and two you can say. Number one, the dream itself, the function of dream, the function of dream, 
the function, purpose why Allah gives someone dream is bishara and anzar. Inzar. Bishara, good news. And an inzar, what? Warning. And also this term within the Qur'an has also been kind of not so well understood. What is anzar and bishara? You know, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مُرْسِلِينَ إِلَّا كَانَ مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْذِرِينَ We never sent any messenger except he is a warner and giving good tidings. What does it mean? What does it mean that Allah sends messengers to... Because this relates with dreams. You'll see how this relates with dreams. Allah sends warners for what? Warners in this dunya. You better stop your criminal activities. أَتَجْعَلُوا فِيهَا مَا يُفْسِدُوا فِيهَا Like the angel said, are you going to cause someone who puts facade on earth? This is why Allah says, Inna kunna munzirin. When we sent down this Quran, we had to warn the people. Warn the people from what? From the facade and the activities that were happening around them. Ya yuhal mudathir qum fa anzir. Warn the people from their wrong activities because those wrong activities will have wrong consequences. And bishara is not only for the hereafter, but bishara for this life. وَبَشِّرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَأُخْرَى تُحِبُّونَهَا نَصْرُ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَفَتْحٌ قَرِيبٌ وَبَشِّرِ بِشَارَ and أَنزَارَ of this life and بِشَارَ أَنزَارَ of the next life so when you have a dream so the dream every dream is either a بِشَارَ a good news of some sort you're doing good deeds keep on you know uh, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in one place, this is one way this happens. That the angels they come down and they give you Bishara good news, you're on the right way, we're going to help you. Somebody sees a dream of the Prophet or some other dream that tells him keep on going in the path that you're going, and so on and so forth. And Anzar, if you're doing something wrong, you will have dreams, you will have nightmares you can say, things that are going to bother you and warn you that there are jinns after you, there's somebody doing magic on you, or there's some other problem that you have to deal with, or you're not doing something in the halal realm of things and you have to find yourself to get out of the situation. So the basic function of dreams is to either encourage you or to warn you, don't go this. This is why some of the ulama, when they talked about istikhara, they put sleep as a part of the, the event, not because it was there within the sharia, but because it had to do with the heart. And when you go to sleep, there may be some hisha, some ishara, you can say, when a person goes to sleep, in which direction to go to, even though the, the sleeping is not a condition for, sleeping is not a condition for istikhara, it's enough to do the dua, and then Allah will make your heart go in one direction or the other. So this is the first thing, tabshir and inzar. This is the role of the dream. The second two role of the dream is that a dream is either either if the ruh is good, the spirit is good. It's if a saleh person, he's sleeping. You know, we spend one third of our life in passivity, in sleeping, and so this sleep. Uh, is 